Good morning, this is Carl. Welcome to Coffee with the Garden Club. Today we're going to talk about yogurt and making your own yogurt at home. And I know a lot of people do this, a lot of people use yogurt makers. I do not. I have my own way of doing it, which doesn't really require me to buy anything from the store as long as I keep a good supply of yogurt culture. And so one of the things I'm going to talk about today is how to keep a good supply of yogurt culture and avoid having problems if your yogurt spoils and you don't have culture to, um, to use to create new yogurt. So, uh, so the way that I have managed to keep my yogurt supply safe uh, is by freezing yogurt. And I've got these great little uh, Sistema um, containers, which I, when I have a good batch of yogurt, I'll make sure that I fill a couple of these with some extra yogurt, and then I'll put it in the freezer, and I'll put a date on it, and that way I know that if something goes wrong with my culture, if the culture, cultures tend to change over time and if it gets to a point where I'm not quite as satisfied with it, I can always go back to an older version of the yogurt culture. So I keep these in the freezer. Uh, I usually have several of them on hand and I, they came in really useful because over the holidays, my wife decided she wanted to buy yogurt. Uh, she was shopping, she picked up a couple of um, quarts of yogurt. I neglected the yogurt that I'd been making and during that time the yogurt actually went bad. So I was not able to take more culture from that. Usually I'll save at the bottom, uh, you know, half cup or so, uh, quarter cup to half cup of yogurt and I'll use that to create my next batch. But uh, I wasn't able to do that because when I opened it up after the new year I noticed that there was mold and that was that. So. In any case, I had to dig into the freezer stock. So that's what I did. Uh, opened up the freezer and I pulled out a couple of these and decided to make a couple of quarts of yogurt and I'm going to see which one turns out best because they're from two different dates. One was from July and one was from August. And so I wanted to make two new batches of yogurt. I'll propagate the best of those two and, uh, and move from there. If both of them are good, then I'll take some samples from each. So uh, this is the process that I use for making yogurt at home without any equipment aside from things you probably already have. Um, what I do is first <clears throat> I take a mason jar, about a quart mason jar, and I boil it. Um, at the same time, I take the milk uh, that I'm going to turn into yogurt Usually I use whole milk, usually I use organic milk. Um, you take that milk and you heat it just to the point that it's kind of frothy, but not really boiling yet. You want to heat it to that point to kill any uh, bacteria that you don't want to propagate during the yogurt making process. Uh, so once the milk gets to that temperature, I then have to lower the temperature down somewhere between 120 and 130 degrees. So I've got a thermometer um, that is a, I think it's a candy thermometer actually, and I put that in there and then I just sink the pan into some ice. The pan where I boiled the, <clears throat> the milk, I sink it into some ice water and stir it around until it gets down to 130 degrees. This probably isn't good for the pan, I don't know, but it's been okay. There, pretty solid pan, so I haven't had any problems with, uh, with that, but uh, I don't know if that's really, strictly speaking, great for your, your pan. Once I've got that water down to 130 degrees, I take that mason jar that I have boiled, because I'm sterilizing it, um, and, uh, and I pour the milk into that jar. Now you have to make sure that the jar has cooled sufficiently, um, because if it's still at boiling temperature and you pour the cool down milk it can crack the glass and you get a big, uh, a big puddle of milk all over your kitchen, which has happened to me before. So definitely make sure you cool down that, um, that mason jar. Um, I also will boil the top uh, so that I can put that back on to the mason jar. And when it's cooling down, I keep it covered and that keeps it all from, uh, from 
collecting too much dust in there uh, that could carry bacteria that could affect your yogurt culture. So once we've got the milk at the right temperature, we've got the glass jar at the right temperature, then we want to get a water bath that is also at the right temperature. So that water that I've used to boil my mason jar, I take that and I pour out you know, maybe half of it, and then I add cool water to that, once again with my thermometer, getting that down to about 130 degrees. Um, so now you've got your hot water bath, you've got your hot or warm um, milk uh, in your mason jar, you mix in your yogurt culture, make sure you stir that in really well, um, and then you take the jar, seal it, put it into the hot water bath, and I use a, a big stock pot for this. Put it in the hot water bath, and then I cover it with a couple of layers of things to keep it warm. And I put the thermometer in so I can see what the reading is at any given time. I find that for three or, three or four hours, if I start the temperature at about 125 or so, because by the time you get around to this, it'll probably have dropped five or 10 degrees. If I stop, start it between 100 and 125, it will stay above 100 degrees, probably for a good three, maybe four hours if I've covered the pot, the stock pot well enough. Once it drops below 100, what I do is I'll take out a quart of water, add a quart of boiling water to the stock pot, and that will usually bring it closer to the temperature. I might have to do that a couple of times to get the water bath, hot water bath, up to temperature again. When you do that, you don't want to take your yogurt and shake it around or do too much of that because it it won't form the sort of the uh, the the, um, the firm yogurt texture that you're looking for if you do that. Anyway, um, now it's time to you know time to set the timer. You set it maybe for three hours. Come back and check the temp the temperature. Make sure it's up to temperature. If it's not and you add more boiling water, try and keep the temperature between 110 and 125 degrees if you can during the whole process. Um, and it's probably going to take, depending on how much culture you added, how fresh the culture is, anywhere from five to eight hours for this whole process to complete. If you let it go too long, you get a whole bunch of whey on the side of your yogurt container. It's not appealing, but it's totally totally acceptable. You can still use the yogurt. You can still propagate more yogurt from that yogurt, even though it's surrounded by this kind of clear yellow liquid um, that's not quite as appealing. It's the stuff you usually pour off of your yogurt when you're, uh, when you're not, um, uh, uh, when you're just about to serve it. So anyway, that's it's totally healthy. You could drink that. It's just a little weird. Um, that is how you can create your own yogurt at home with absolutely no special equipment, just what you probably got around the house. And, uh, and, and you can keep that going for generations as long as you are careful to keep everything sterile and, uh, and you know, during the process, um, or as, as clean as possible to give your yogurt culture um, more of a, a, a benefit than, uh, than the invading cultures from your air, like yeast and, and other things that, uh, that can get in and spoil the flavor. So that is our episode for today. Uh, thank you for joining Coffee with the Garden Club. Uh, I will be back tomorrow with uh, another episode and I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day.